Hello ladies and welcome to our Friday Focus with Pauline, your free live training. So each week I go live uh, at midday on a Friday, Melbourne, Australia time and I bring you some free training that will be relevant to you uh, in your business as a businesswoman, as someone who runs an online business and wants to grow that business and have a life outside your business as well. So if you're here, please say hi, let me know that you're here and say, uh, tell us where you're from, where in the world you're from. Uh, you can pop that in the, the comments box. Uh, I'd love to know where you're coming from. Give me a, uh, uh, an emoji if you're happy to be here, if you're excited to see what we're talking about today. And please participate because if you have a particular question about your own business and how what I'm talking about today relates to you and your own business, then if you uh, ask me that, then I can answer it uh, directly here on the call. Hi, Sarah, in Sydney. What's the weather like in Sydney today? We have a beautiful sunny day here in Melbourne, uh, so it's really exciting. We've had a bit of rain lately, uh, but sun is very, very welcome. So let's get started because I, I know that your time is precious and I want to make sure that I give you, oh, chilly. Yeah, it is chilly here too, but sun helps. Uh, I want to give you uh, as much value as I can and be respectful of the time that you have put aside to spend with me today so that we can make the most of it and you can have, uh, give you the insights that are going to help you develop that powerful sales page that's going to help you convert uh, uh, people who are looking at the sales page into a potential client. So sales pages. Now there are lots of different types of websites, web pages that you can have. And what we're talking about today is one that is designed to make people take an action. Now it may be, uh, a, they've got lots of different names as well. You could call it a sales page, a landing page, a squeeze page, an opt-in page, a splash page. All those sorts of things really are the same thing. And one of the most important things you need to be uh, aware of when you're creating a page like this that is designed to promote either something free or something paid is that it should be a standalone page. If you've got a website and you've got a banner at the top with lots of options for people to click on, then that's going to distract them from the purpose of having the page in the first place. So the page should be one single call to action on that page. So if you have a website and you're using your website to host a, a landing page for potentially something that you're offering to sell or you want people to sign up for, then if you have lots of things at the top for them to click on, they're going to be easily distracted. So get rid of that. If you, uh, if you can't do that on your web page, then sign up for something like lead pages where you can create just a page that's a single page that uh, keeps their focus on what it is you want them to keep their focus on. So that's the first thing to make sure that you do have a page that only has that one option on there. And then you need to uh, be clear of course of what the call to action is on the page. So what is it for? Is it for them to sign up for something free? Is it to sign up for something that they're going to download? Is it to sign up for a workshop or a webinar? Or is it a challenge maybe? Or is it a sales page where you are at the stage where you're going to sell them something? Whatever your uh, purpose of the page is, the formula is pretty much the same for any page that is leading them towards taking an action. And there are five points that I want you to follow or five uh, steps that I want you to follow in order to have the outcome that you want, which is a conversion on that page. Hi, Tula. So the five points, let's go through them quickly first. And if someone could type them in, that would be really, really awesome. Uh, and then we'll come back to them and go through them in a little bit more detail. So the first one is to hit the pain points. So number one is to hit the pain points. Number two is to identify with them and share your story. So that's number two. Number three is to share the solution. Number four is you can do it too. 
I'm going through these too quickly so you won't be able to type them in, but we'll go through them in detail. Number five is you're not alone, it really works. And number six is make it even better. So let's start with number one. So number one is to hit the pain points. And this is one of the, the keys of marketing. And you will know that hopefully, if you've seen me before, that it's really important for you to know exactly what the pain points are of your ideal client, because that is the way that you are going to be able to identify with them and have them take action. If you don't solve a very strong, urgent problem for your people, then there's no reason for them to take any action, is there? And if you don't know what that problem is, then you can't nail it. So you need to know firstly, what are the top of mind problems that your ideal client is having? And of course, in a sales page, if we know that at the top, we're going to be addressing these pain problems, what do we want to lead to down the bottom? So you need to know where you're taking them. Is it to uh, help them to uh, maybe like tool us to uh, lead them to a styling session, for example? Is it helping them to uh, sign up for your online program? Is it to sign up to, to get a weight loss uh, checklist? You need to identify obviously the pain points that are associated with where you're leading them. So the first thing is to hit the pain points. And unfortunately, even though you don't like doing it, if you're someone who doesn't like putting people in pain, you don't like harping on it, you don't like digging your thumb into the side of their ribs and, and making it hurt, this is the way that you are really going to get their attention and show them that uh, you have a solution for them. So you need to ask them the questions. Are you suffering from this? Is this you? Does this sound like you? And really come in with at least three, um, three problems or three, three expressions of the problem, three uh, ways that they would experience the problem. So start that with that right up the top. Hit the problem, hit the pain points hard. And then, so that's the first thing. So that they, you're really making, uh, painting a picture of what life is like for them at the moment. And the idea is that where they are at the minute is not that good. And if they take your solution, which is down a little bit further, they're going to be much better off. So that's where you want to be leading them. So first thing is you're going to be hitting the pain points hard. The second thing is you're going to show them that you identify with them. So that, excuse me, so that you, uh, you say to them, I've been where you're at. If this is it, this is if you have been where they're at. I know exactly what you're feeling like. I've been there. I found that I used to have trouble doing this. Tell them a story about you. Now, if you haven't had a story, if it's not about you, you can share somebody else. You can either, uh, you can talk about something like many people that I've worked with have had this problem or you can make someone up and give them an example there so that they understand that they're not alone. This is the thing. So you're going to be uh, telling them, so firstly hitting the pain points. So that's number one. If someone could type in one, hit the pain points. Number two is identify with them and share your story. So you need to go, yep, I know exactly what it's like. I know exactly how you're feeling. I used to feel like that. I used to sit at home waiting for someone to call and never having, um, never going on a date, depending on what your uh, business is. I used to be the person who'd sit on the couch and eat ice cream all night long and wonder why I couldn't wait. And you really share the, the picture of what your story is like so that they really can resonate with that. So firstly, you're doing the hitting the pain points. Thanks, Sarah. And the second one is identify with them and share your story. So that's number two. So getting really clear that they are not by themselves, that other people have been exactly where they are and that you know where they are and you understand. But what is really important is that if you are someone who is, uh, has the problem that they have, that you have overcome that problem. So if you're someone, maybe you're someone who helps um, a business coach and you help people get, uh, women get clients like I do. You don't go, I know exactly how you feel. I've been struggling. I've been online every day and I just cannot get any clients. It's really frustrating. I've got no idea what I should be doing. 
that's not going to inspire confidence in them. So you need to show them that you were there, but now you pass that. And you don't have to be all the way at nirvana, at their, their ideal uh, outcome, but you need to be on the way. You need to have you need to be able to show them that the, the problem that they have right now that they are experiencing, you have overcome that problem and you are on your way. You know how to overcome the problem that they're experiencing right now. Now, if you've got any questions about this, please pop it in. And if you want me to go particularly with talk particularly about your uh, situation, then I'm happy to use that as an example because at the minute I'm just pulling uh, different examples from my head. Okay. So firstly, hit the pain point. Second, identify with them and share your story and show them that you understand the problems that they've ha they're having, but you've overcome them and it is possible to get to the other side. So that's number two. Number three is to share the solution. So number three, share the solution. This is where you go, yep, I used to be exactly where you are right now, but now things have all changed. I discovered uh, a, a new way to do things. I discovered a secret that showed me how to move out from this bit of pain towards where I wanted to be. So you show them that you have had an aha moment or a revelation or everything changed for you when this happened. So you make it really powerful so that they understand that there is a possibility to get out of where they are and move towards where they want to be and celebrate how things are now. So tell them now how things are. And now, instead of sitting at home at the, on the couch eating ice cream, I, um, I go for a run every morning. Uh, I've met a new partner. I've now um, lost 10 kilos in the last six weeks and things are looking fantastic for me. So you show them that things can change and either you or my clients or the example that you're talking about has had that solution and things can be different. So sharing the solution. And number four is to show them you can do it too. So four is you can do it too. So that's where you give them confidence. You say, uh, you show them how easy it is. And this is where it's really important for you to have a system or a a process or something that you can show them because people are not going to buy um, something that's that's not tangible so even if you have a say you're someone who helps people with their mindset um, to uh, let's see a million dollar mindset to to make a million dollars if you say I will help you create a million dollars in your business and yeah you don't need to know how I do it but it's it's awesome you know work with me and we'll do it together if you can say something like I have a a five a five step powerful system step-by-step -step system that helps you reach that million dollar mark in your business can you see how much more effective that is and everyone has a system if you are, even if you're someone who's a, say you're a one-on-one -on -one coach and you work with people and you know that each session people will come to you and uh, you'll solve their problems and you think to yourself, well, I don't have a system. All I do is I go to each session and I, uh, I see what they ask me and I give them help and we deal with it there and then. There's no system there. If you take a step back and look at the people that you've worked with over a period of time, you will be able to identify this. You, there will be some sort of a system, some sort of a step-by-step a -step process that you follow with people, even if it's only in your head subconsciously. And what I would highly recommend is for you to get it out of your head and turn it into something tangible because it'll be much more powerful that way. So let's say uh, you're someone like me who is a business coach, who is a messaging coach, who helps women uh, master their messaging so that they can attract clients easily. Now, if someone comes to me, 
we would have they would have to know firstly uh, exactly who it was that they wanted to work with they would have to know uh, the the problems that this person was ha ha having they would have to have to have a transformational solution to provide for these people and be able to articulate what that was they would have to uh, have a way of marketing themselves so all these things would have to be in place and they would have to do them sequentially because they can't suddenly come in and go okay I've decided I want to create um, an online program they can't do that without having all these basic things in place. So you have a look at what it is you do with your people and what is it that you do every time with them? Usually the first time you'll get have to get clear on where they're at and there'll be bits missing and those are the bits that they have to have before they can move to the next step. So hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, if you've got any questions, just pop them in below here. So you wanna share the solution and you wanna show them that they can do it too. So show them that you have a, a proven way of solving their problem that anyone who works with you can achieve. So it's not like, oh, well, it's fine for her. She could do it, but I don't know how I would do it. If you've got a system that people can follow, then they know that that is something that they can do because they can just follow the system and achieve the right results. Number five. Number five is you're not alone. It really works. So number five, you're not alone. It really works. And where, that's the bit where you, you share stories of other people. And it doesn't have to be a huge page full of, of glossy photos of people who've moved from zero to a million dollars in five weeks or who've lost 100 kilos or anything like that. It can just be little snippets of success stories, of positive thoughts, of, of uh, ways that people can understand that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So whether it's people that you've worked with, whether it's, um, it's so clients, for example, client stories, maybe it's testimonials, those sort of things will show people that they're not on their own there is a solution and the solution works. Now, testimonials nowadays are not as powerful as they used to be. I know myself from personal experience having used it and also from the mentors that I work with who have found this too. If you don't have any, uh, any client stories, any uh, people that you've worked with, any success stories, don't worry about this bit because people will automatically look at that and go, well, that's fine for her, but it's not going to work for me. That doesn't mean it's going to work for me. So they're not as powerful as you may think they are. The most powerful thing is for you to get so clear on the problems that your ideal client is having and show them that you can confidently offer them a solution that they understand, that they can see by what you've said in this, um, this sales page, they can see that it could happen for them as well. So you're not promising to move them from something that's small to huge in a, in a, a single leap. You're showing that you, them that instead of helping them move, for, say, from A to Z, you can help them move from A to H, something like that. So don't uh, promise too much because you'll find that people will go, Instead of going, oh, that's fantastic. I can't wait to get this. This is awesome. They'll say, well, I don't believe that. I think that's too big a, a jump and they will switch off. So promise them something that is a bit of a stretch, but not so much of a stretch that uh, they may feel it's unbelievable. Even if you can do it, even if you can do it. Okay. So in the sales page, you need to be giving them confidence that you can give them a solution, but not building up your solution so much that it seems too far removed from the situation they're in at the moment. Okay, let's see. 
and then at the end you're going so number six is to make it even better and then that's where you can add in some extra proof some extra maybe bonuses that will happen and this is where you're talking really about the pleasure points so the outcomes they're going to have by having this solution so really getting clear on what the the value is of the solution and the extra benefits that they're going to get from having it show them um, visions of what it could be like for them once they have this solution get really clear get really big and show them exactly in a picture in a vivid picture so not just oh you can lose weight and you'll be um, really happy and you'll be excited talk about what their life will be like this is the most powerful thing of all that you can put in there is when you're talking about that what their life is like and making it into a story so uh, talking about how their day is when they're getting up in the morning instead of uh, looking in the cupboard and and thinking well all I've got in there is sugary sweets so uh, cereal so that's all I'm going to eat and I know it's going to make me put on weight but I, I've got no energy to think of anything else instead of that now they're starting to think well I've I've prepared something ahead of time I know the sort of foods that are going to make me uh, feel good and feel healthy and help me keep that weight off and I, I can easily prepare those because I've got a plan laid out for me. So talking up what their life is like afterwards vividly in that vivid picture. So uh, we've got number six in there. So number six is uh, make it even better. So it's just a very simple six point, six, six point uh, sales page formula. Now, if you have any questions about this, like I said, just ask. So obviously, it's a bit awkward for me to show you a sales page here uh, on the Facebook Live. That's more of a something we can do in a, a webinar, but I, I don't think that we need to go there because hopefully what I've given you at the minute will give you an idea on what you need to put in there. The key as well is for you to make sure that what you are offering is suited exactly to uh, the person that you're targeting so you're offering because if you are if you're targeting someone's pain points up the top of the page and then you get down to the bottom and it's like this is it this is what you're going to get and they go I don't want that then there's a mismatch there your messaging is off so you need to be as clear as possible about who you who you want this to be for so that you are marketing it correctly so that by the time they get to your offer they're, they're champing at the bit thinking, where do I sign up? I need this, I need it. And the other thing I suppose to remember as well is if this is, say for example, this is a some sort of a freebie. So when I'm saying a sales page, maybe this is a landing page for something that you're offering for free. Make sure that what the offer is, firstly, is must have for your people, but also that you're going to, if you're obviously giving them something to for free your aim down the track is going to be to move them into a paid offer make sure that this is a perfect lead into that offer so that it's not a mismatch so that by the time you get to your paid offer it's like hang on I came in here for this I came in here to get help to find the first um, my first love and now you you telling me how to have a baby over here something like that Okay, all right, so Sarah is asking, what about guarantees, refunds? How do you offer a refund when it's them that needs to implement your coaching? Now, Sarah, are you talking about one-on-one -on -one coaching? Because I would definitely have at, at the start, or are you talking about uh, refund when it's them that needs to implement your coaching? I'm not 100% sure of what you're asking there. So if we're talking particularly just about a sales page, uh, it would depend what it is. Uh, if you're talking about a coaching program, for example, you would have something at the start of that coaching program that would uh, would qualify people before they get in. And also, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, you'd want to make sure that you do get the right people to come in at the start uh, so that you're not getting people who are not going to get the right results. And you would say to them, okay, okay, one-on-one -on -one coaching, perfect. All right. So I would have something at the start, a... Uh, a coaching agreement that people would have to sign and in that coaching agreement you would talk about okay uh, I agree that I will uh, I will implement what it is that we talk about 
and I will do the steps that my coach tells me I need to do and I will take responsibility for my own actions because you can offer them a certain amount of help and guidance but you cannot make them get results you cannot make them do the things that need to be done so I would not have a I wouldn't be giving them a refund at all ever with one-on-one -on -one coaching but I would be correcting them along the way and if they're not getting the results that they wanted I would be saying to them okay last I would make sure that they had a clear action plan and I would say to them okay last session you were supposed we were talked about you doing XYZ have you done XYZ what were the results of doing that did you uh, why didn't you do it what stopped you from doing it and then I would reassess and give them more actions and I would continue to work with them as long as they were doing what they were supposed to. That's the thing. The agreement needs to be uh, equal from both sides. The coach needs to be giving them great guidance, great coaching, uh, great uh, information and helping them along the way. But they also have a commitment. It's a 50-50 relationship. They need to have a commitment to, uh, to follow the coaching advice, to come to the sessions with their questions, to come to the sessions with their, their full attention and to be prepared to put in, I suppose, the work and to do the things that need to be done in order to get the results. Uh, does that answer your question, Sarah? If, if you're selling a program, for example, or people are investing in a an online program, you may upfront have a guarantee. You would say upfront, say for example, with my program, uh, I have a 30 day money back guarantee, where if people decide within that first 30 days, they're not happy, it's not what they expected, then I am happy to refund their money. I don't want people in my program who don't wanna be there. Who are not going to get the results and that works both ways because that gives me 30 days to decide if this person is right for me and my program and if they're not if they're not if they haven't got the right vibe the right attitude they're not doing what they're told if they're making waves in my beautiful community of um, of clients I don't want them there and I have the right then to say to them sorry this isn't working out uh, let's say goodbye so that works both ways, the refunds. But you need to say it up front. That's the most important thing. You can't suddenly change the, uh, change the rules halfway through uh, and then, then suddenly say when you've spent maybe three months with them and you've done countless hours of coaching together and then they say, well, I haven't got the results I wanted, so give me my money back. That just doesn't work. But as long as up front you have those conditions in place with the onboarding, uh, the um, client agreement, uh, then everything should be, uh, everything's written down. That's the thing. So they can come back. You could go back to that. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so does anyone else have any other questions about that? I, I know we have gone off a little bit of a tangent there talking about um, refunds and one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I'm happy to answer any other questions if you have any. And that's great. Thanks, Sarah. I'm glad that you were happy with that. Uh, so who at the moment is creating landing pages or opt-in pages or sales pages? Because I suppose if we think about it, that is a more formal way of doing it. But with social media nowadays, uh, there's a lot of value also in just having a post, making it, so if, if all of this is sounding way too hard for you, if you're thinking, oh, sales pages, landing pages, I don't know how to do all this, it's too technical for me, then you don't have to. The simple, especially if you're starting off, if you're starting from scratch, if you're not technical tech at all, if this is all scary, scary stuff, then you can start as simply as putting up a post in someone's group um, and offer something and have people send you a personal message. And you can then connect with them there and get their email address there and deliver them something there. If all this stuff is, is too much, I encourage you to move towards 
having landing pages though because they are allowed you to automate in your business therefore you can leverage your time so you're not spending time manually doing all this back and forth and having a CRM system that allows you to put a customer relationship management system that allows you to have a database of people because ideally what you want is as much automation as possible in your business and it doesn't have to be complicated automation it can be simple 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 if you had something like MailChimp for example which is virtually free see a virtually free CRM system if you had something like lead pages which is what I use for most of my landing pages I'm not sure what the cost is at the moment there is a cost involved in it but that allows you to create a simple landing page with uh, drag and drop menus in there it can give you a pop-up box where people can put their name and email address in. It'll allow you to deliver something on, a, on a, a thank you page. All those sorts of things can be done very, very simply. And then you can send people to your uh, email list where they start to get emails regularly, automated email sequence that's delivered automatically. So they have the, you have this little system set up where everyone who opts into something is nurtured and looked after without you having to do it manually all the time. Yes, yes, I agree, Tula, that's that's right. So Tula, do you at the moment have landing pages? Because what I would recommend for you is if you have different services, which I know that you do, uh, to have a specific one. So this one might be your landing page for your style sessions. This might be for your wardrobe makeover, which might be the same thing. This one might be for people to sign up to go on a shopping trip with you. <clears throat> okay. No. So, and when we're talking about landing pages as well, there are landing pages and there are, uh, sorry, there are sales pages and then there's just like an information page. So say for example, for you tool, if you, if someone was on your website, you may have a button that they can click and then go to a sales page, which may be really just explaining what your services are. And they're already there, they're all ready to sign up, they just need to know how to do it. Whereas if you had a sales page that you were going to use somewhere else where people didn't know you, for example, where you were going to have to explain in that sales page uh, what the benefits of working with you were, then that's more what I've talked about today. So you've got the website, but you want people to convert and purchase my virtual wardrobe edit, for example. Okay, yep, so definitely I would create a sales page where you're talking about, like we talked about today. So when we talked about those six points, the, the pain points, identify with them, share your story, uh, share the solution. You can do it now. You're not alone. It really works and make it even better. So for people watching now, you can go back because Sarah has has beautifully typed in all of those for us so that the numbers are all in there, uh, the, the parts to the sales page. But what that will allow you to do, Tula, is have that complete, so, so that they're not having to go back and forth with you and go, what's included? What do I get? And they can then sign up if, you can have a link, probably what you would have would be a link to a payment and a link to uh, your calendar so that they can book into both of those. Uh, and then they can do that automatically. And it you can have a link that you probably send people at the moment that would be what you would put in the button on the sales page. Does that make sense? So does anyone else have any questions? Anyone else here? Because uh, I know that I have taken up a bit of your time. So hopefully you found some value in listening today. Please um, give me an emoji if, you, if you've enjoyed our time here today. That would be awesome. And if there are no more questions, I will allow you to go, ladies, and get on with your day. But we'll just remind you that I do have a, thank you, I do have a masterclass um, coming up very soon, which is, that's okay, Tula, you're welcome which is uh, how to attract five ideal clients and earn up to $10,000 per month, all using no cost marketing strategies. So I will put the link to that in uh, the, the comments below. It's getvisiblegetclients.com. So I would love to see you ladies on my next masterclass. For now, have a fabulous day. And uh, if you have any suggestions for uh, training ideas, 
<laughs> phone lost voice. <laughs> if you have any suggestions on, <clears throat> excuse me, other topics you'd like me to talk about in uh, this uh, weekly training, then pop them below because I'm always wanting to serve you ladies and give you what you want. And I'm happy to talk about something that would really help you out. Thanks so much for all the hearts, ladies. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next week.